What is a system stakeholder? Who are these system stakeholders? In this topic, we'll discuss system stakeholders, what they are, where you find them, and why they're important to developing your system. So stay tuned for more. In this video, we'll be discussing task P9, or system stakeholders. The stakeholders having an interest in a system are identified in this task. Potential inputs include organizational mission statement, mission or business objectives, missions, business functions, and mission business processes that the system will support, other mission business process information, organizational security and privacy policies and procedures, organizational charts, information about individuals or groups, both internal and external, that have an interest in and decision-making responsibility for the system. Expected outputs for this task are a list of system stakeholders. The primary responsibility for this task is the mission or business owner and the system owner. Supporting roles include the chief information officer, the authorizing official or authorizing official's designated representative, information owner or information steward, senior agency information security officer, senior agency official for privacy, and the chief acquisition officer. This has alignment with the system development life cycle for new systems, the initiation step, concept requirements and definition, for existing systems, operations and maintenance. It also aligns to the cybersecurity framework for ID.AM, which is asset management, the data, personnel, devices, systems, and facilities that enable the organization to achieve business purposes are identified and managed consistent with their relative importance to the organizational objectives and the organization's risk strategy, and also ID.BE, or business environment, the organization's mission, objectives, stakeholders, and activities are understood and prioritized. This information is used to inform cybersecurity roles, responsibilities, and risk management decisions. Stakeholders include individuals, organizations, or representatives that have an interest in the system throughout its life cycle for design, development, implementation, delivery, operation, and sustainment. So as you can see, stakeholders can be just about any stage in the system's life cycle, and they are those people that are impacted in some way by the system being in operation. That could be the authorizing official approving the system, or a network administrator that has to design the paths for communication for the system, or a system administrator that has to administer the servers that run the system, or even individuals that are impacted by the process or procedures that the system partakes in. There can also be supply chain stakeholders. Stakeholders also include all aspects of the supply chain. Stakeholders may reside in the same organization or they may reside in a different organization in situations where there is a common interest by those organizations in the information system. This may occur during the development, operation, and maintenance of many types of systems, including cloud-based systems, shared service systems, or any system where the organizations may be adversely impacted by a breach or compromise to a system or for a variety of considerations related to supply chain. So those supply chain stakeholders are individuals or organizations that can be impacted by the operation of the information system that you're building. Communication among stakeholders is important during every step in the RMF and throughout the SDLC to ensure security and privacy requirements are satisfied, concerns are issued and addressed expeditiously, and risk management processes are carried out effectively. References to this task include special publications 800-39, 800-64, 800-160 Volume 1, 800-161, and the NIST Cybersecurity Framework. In this module, we discuss Task P9, 
inputs and outputs, roles and responsibilities, SDLC alignment, cybersecurity framework alignment, stakeholder scope, supply chain stakeholders, how stakeholders are identified and managed throughout the life cycle, stakeholder communication, and finally references. If all these things make sense to you, good to go. Continue on. If some of them are confusing or don't make sense to you, please go back and watch the video again.